And he was just a nice, honest, Italian lad. Jean, hmm. uh, you had a marvelous career. You worked with very well-known people. Yes. Uh, there came a time in your life when you started to tour with your husband. Yes. It was, it was for his magic show. Yes. Uh, you, you must have seen the whole world touring. Yeah, we, toured, we toured South America, we were right around the world. Yeah, we did. We toured a lot. Uh, but you see, the reason I did that was because I had a little boy. Mm -hmm. And I thought that being with my little boy was much more important than any, any kind of career thing. I understand. And I saw all these people shipping their kids off the schools and everything, but I never did. I had my I had my little boy with me. And I didn't for until he was eight I didn't do anything except two commercials a year because I I don't know. You have one chance to watch this little creature that you have yeah, that's true. spawned and he didn't ask to come like <laughs> like I know I'm being silly now but my little dog and my cat, they didn't ask to come, me to buy them. So I have to take mm -hmm. care of them. You take care of what you what you uh, mm -hmm. find or bring or get <laughs> in this world. Yeah. Well, I still have some questions left for you, but, but you uh, got no time we, uh, on this thing. No, well, well, we will go to do that in the next part of the interview. Hi, welcome back again. I'm Rene Riva from the Laurel and Hardy Forum, and I'm still sitting here having a nice chat with Jean Darling. Yes, this after the, you found the second disc. After I found the second disc. Well, this is part two of the interview. Uh, welcome. You see Jean, how don't bad laugh I at am? Me. She's, I'm she's just so laughing bad. at me. I'm telling you mm. exactly. He couldn't find it. And he had to go to the room. And, and I know you're going to cut this out. No, I'm not. But I no, know no. you're going to cut this out. I'm not. You thought oh, yes, you were going to get away with something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't get away with it, but you know, that's the way uh, Gene works. Eh? So now you found out about me. Uh, I screwed up you things. You found out about me, I'll bet I <laughs> Well, Gene, we were talking about your career. Um, when you moved to uh, Ireland. I didn't move there, I just stopped there. I thought you were... Uh... No! You went living. That had nothing to do with it. Uh, we were in London. Mm -hmm. And we were having tea at some hotel or other, and a man came over and said, you know what, uh, he recognized me, he didn't know my husband from the mm -hmm. hole in the wall. <laughs> and, but then we explained what we were doing there and he said, oh you're a magic show, we would love a magic show in Dublin. And I have a friend, uh, Brendan Smith, and he's in Dublin, runs the Olympia Theatre and we'll get in touch, you know, and he said, oh yeah, 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 Merry, Merry Christmas, you know, fine, and, you know, you know, he's just being mm -hmm. polite. Yeah. And so we went on to uh, Antwerp, where we played the Ancien Belgique, and uh, we were there for about nine months, and then comes through a cable from uh, Dublin saying that they wanted us to play the two weeks before Easter uh, at the Olympia. So we went to Dublin, and uh, we played the Olympia. And the reason that we got uh, permits to stay there was because in London, if we wanted to leave our, we had two, two or three tons of props for a big show. Mm -hmm. And we, lots of times, my husband and I worked out of a suitcase. He had his tricks and I had my dress, you yeah. know, and we just, I sang and he mm -hmm. mentioned magic. And, uh, but at Pickwick's, it was 25 pounds a month to store the things, and in Dublin, at uh, it, it was only two. Ah, so then we yeah. decided to leave our things mm -hmm. when we weren't using them in Dublin, and that's how that's why I say it just stopped there. And then we went on around the world, and we were coming back, and that's when I broke up with my husband. Mm -hmm. And I would have got off in uh, Acapulco because we were coming from South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I would have got off in Acapulco because I could make a living going back to the States, you know, in this, uh, either Los Angeles or New York. Yeah. But my son had been in, in and out of Dublin a number of times and he thought he wanted to go back and he was, I don't know, 16 or something. 
and I wasn't going to let him go, and I was breaking up with my husband, yeah. so that's when I went to Dublin, and then I wasn't going to stay in Dublin, <laughs> and then this cat came, a little, a little tiny cat that looked like she'd been pulled through a, an exhaust pipe <laughs> backwards, you know, backwards. a terrible little oh. thing, and so I felt sorry for her. I wasn't going to keep a cat. I wasn't no. going to keep a cat. No. <laughs> And I fed her, and then she went and got in trouble, and she was pregnant. And you can't throw her. No, you, you can't throw her, no, you can't. So we had to go and rent another place, because we weren't allowed to have animals there. And I used to have to hide her when they come around for the rent, when we lived, because they come around with the rent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'd have to run and hide the cat somewhere. So we looked and looked and looked and nobody wanted animals, so that's when we bought a house for the cat. And that's exactly why we bought a house for the cat. And so uh, we owned it now, that was 1980 that we bought the house. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, you are a, an all-American girl. Right? Yeah. And I mean, isn't it different or, or difficult to, uh, to adapt to to Ireland, or didn't you have any trouble at all with that? I've never had any trouble. I, well, you see, I have never been lonely in my life. I have never really missed anybody. I miss my animals, but I've never mm -hmm. really missed anybody. And I've never really... Uh, see, I'm home now. Here I am. I'm mm -hmm. in Ghent. I'm home. My teddy bear is upstairs, sitting on my pillow, waiting for me to come back. So and I'm here's home. another teddy bear. Yeah, well, my teddy bear is more portable than you are. I think so. He's only that high. Oh. But if you want to be my teddy bear, you can be my teddy bear. No, but, but, but Jean, you yes. know, um, I, I, I'm just curious about... Yes. Um, you worked a lot on tour with your husband. Yes, uh, I sang. You you sang. You you wore a beautiful Indian dress. I saw it mm -hmm. in one of the pictures. You, yes. you were absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Uh, well, just say it if I'm getting too personal mm -hmm. now. But is the touring? Uh, is it because of the touring that you and your husband broke up? No, it's because he. Well, I'll be serious now, and I'm getting off into a personal thing of, uh, I think, everybody's life. Well, you don't have to. No, 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 no. It's, uh, it, it's uh, something that I wish I could tell to everybody on earth. You never know. You can be live with a person, you can be married to a person for 90,000 years, and you never know them until the flood comes or the earthquake comes or the something terrible happens and then suddenly you find that the person you were living with when it's all lovely and the skis are mm. greased and they're going downhill in lovely snow and it's a beautiful day and the sun is shining and when the storm comes they cannot face the storm they cannot pull up their socks and say, well, oh, so it's a storm. Mm -hmm. They completely fall apart. They turn against everything. They turn against you. They turn against their own life. Mm -hmm. But you never know a person until you hit a bad spot. And we hit a couple of very bad spots and uh, where he got us to a point where we were absolutely broke and I would not sell my jewelry to send my child off to a school because he had never wanted children. And uh, that did not set well. Well, Jean, it's very, uh, very sad, uh, of course, uh, but you said it very beautifully. Uh, well, but I was with him for 19 happen. years. Yeah. But the thing is that that you never know a person until you hit the bad spots. And this is why I, I, I feel so sorry for these girls who go and they start living with somebody and say, mm -hmm. oh, I'm living with them because we'll get to know each other. Nuts. <laughs> Nuts. Yeah. You don't get to know well, each other. Well, those are some wise words, Jean, really. Uh, well, now, we, now I'm talking about wise words. Uh -huh. Is there anything that you would like to say to our Law and Hardy Forum members? We, we, what would you want to give them uh, as, a, as, a, as a, a guide to life? 
Well, we are right to life. I think that the best guide to life is that uh, you thank God when you wake up in the morning and you're good natured and you don't have to wait for coffee mm -hmm. because <laughs> when you wake up in the morning nothing bad has happened yet and don't go hating Mondays because if you hate Mondays you're hating a seventh of your life. Now that's true. Yeah, that's very. And that's the only thing I can thinking. think of. Yeah. Well, Gina, I want to thank you very much for this interview. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Ooh, I want three. Thank I you. want three. Oh, you three. want three? Yes. <laughs> thank you very much, Gina. It has been a great interview, and I'm sure uh, all of our forum members will uh, enjoy. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye.